Hello, this is Mr. Huff. Let's talk about geometric solids. You'll probably want to take some notes in your engineering notebook as you listen to this lecture. There will probably be about three homework assignments based on this content. So when we look at geometric solids, we're talking about three-dimensional objects. When we sketch those, we're making them uh, appear to be three-dimensional even though they're two-dimensional. So here you have these flat shapes. Uh, but they look like a cube and they look like a cylinder. Solids have five, or yes, five, five characteristics or properties that we're interested in. They have volume, they have mass, they have weight, density, and surface area. So these are the, these are the things you need to understand when you're designing a solution when you use solids. Volume re refers to the amount of three-dimensional space. This should be pretty straightforward for most of you. In this course, you, we will use both customary and metric. In metric, we usually talk about cubic centimeters. It could also be cubic meters or uh, cubic kilometers or something like that, as long as it's a length measurement cubed. In English, we will typically use cubic inch, but you could also use cubic feet and cubic yards. This is the easiest calculation. The volume of a cube is equal to the length of a side cubed. So in this instance, we have a, a cube with four inches on each side. So the length of the cube, length of the side of the cube cubed <laughs> is going to give you 64 cubic inches, which is four times four times four or four raised to the third power. Either way will get you the same answer. Rectangular prisms, most of you know about this as well. This is like if you're calculating the volume of a box, you have width, depth, and height, and you multiply all three of those. The product of those is your volume. So volume equals width times depth times height. And that's pretty straightforward. So in this case, you can see the calculation gives you 52.5 inches cubed or cubic inches. Cylinder is a little more challenging. You have to take into consideration. I mean, it makes sense. Look at it. You have a circle here and that's pi r squared gives you that area times the height. So it's the same as length times width times height, except in this case, we have a circle. So we have to find the area of the circle times the height. And that's what you're doing. So you need to know how to use this formula to find volume or radius or height. So we'll talk about those in class. All right. So here's your example that gets you 42.4 cubic inches. And it's very similar when you talk about a cone. You have a circle on the bottom, so pi r squared times the height, but the height is tapering, so you have to divide by 3. If you want to understand why this works, pay attention in geometry class. We're just going to trust the formula. So you need to know how to rearrange this to solve for the various components. So this is the formula you need. These formulas are on your uh, formula sheet that I provided to you at the beginning of the year. So you can see that we have volume and surface areas of cubes and prisms and right circular cones. That's the kind I'll give you. Uh, pyramid, notice how we do not have the area for the surface, or we don't have surface area formulas on here. For the area of the base, you'll have to pay attention to, is it a triangle or a square or a rectangle? That will make a difference. For a sphere, we have the formulas for volume and for surface area. For cylinders, we have volume and surface area. And for irregular prisms, that means it has an odd shape. Uh, you're going to take the volume. Uh, the volume is going to be the area of one end times the height and the area is going to be the area of the base. So if you have a complex shape, you can find that area like we did before when we found surface area of two-dimensional shapes. Uh, notice how this does not provide you a surface area calculation. So we'll keep the surface area calculations limited to what you have on the formula sheet. It's important to recognize that mass and weight are not the same thing. 
In the system international, we use grams and kilograms to represent mass. This tells us about the amount of matter in a substance or, a, or an object. And in US customary, it's the idea of mass is the unit slug. I have rarely seen slug used. Weight is another idea. It's the force of gravity acting on that mass. And in US customary, we tend to use pounds to represent weight and we use pounds to represent mass. Uh, in System International, it's Newtons. So you take, and we'll talk about the formula here in a moment. So it's important to note that these are not the same things. The difference is weight is a mass in a gravitational field. So let's look at what that formula is. So we would have the mass, which is in slugs. And I really don't like how this is. We'll use metric for most of this. Um, times the acceleration due to gravity in feet per second squared. And when you multiply this out, you get weight in pounds. And notice that the gravitational acceleration is 32 feet per second squared. So be careful. Uh, again, this uh, will be using, you'll see that um, pounds is used interchangeably for mass and weight. So the thing is, the number of pounds in the gravitational field of Earth, it's the, they're the same value. But if you went to the moon or in outer space, you have a different weight, but the same mass. Another um, property of solids is density. And we're going to do it two different ways. We'll have mass density and weight density. So mass density is grams per cubic centimeter. And then weight density is pounds per cubic inch. So keep in mind the distinction between mass and weight. Um, the unit tells you how to calculate that. So here are some examples of densities in grams per cubic centimeter and uh, pounds per cubic inch. So for instance, uh, pure water is the basis for the metric system. So it's one gram per cubic centimeter and that's 0 0.036 pounds per cubic inch in the customary measurement system. So you can see that uh, the numbers for pounds per cubic inch tend to be a lot smaller than grams per cubic centimeter. So. This is the formula. The mass is equal to the volume times the density. Normally I've seen this as density equals mass divided by volume. So kind of keep that in mind. And since we're going to make a distinction here, uh, the density is also equal to the weight divided by the volume. So if you're in customary, we need to use this format to get pounds per cubic inch. Surface area is different from area. Area is a two-dimensional shape. Surface area is a three-dimensional shape. So you have to include all of the faces of the three-dimensional object. And here's an example. Let's say we have this rectangular prism. It has six sides. Notice that B and D are the same. A and F are the same. C and E are the same. So that brings us up to, well, to find the total area. You add the areas of all of those together, and that's it. But there's a formula that helps us with this. So we can do two times the width times the depth, plus the width times the height, plus the depth times the height. So you're just multiplying those each individually and multiplying it times two, and that will get you the area of your prism. And they have an example in the notes to show that it gives you exactly the same answer as before. And another example. If you're finding the surface area of a cube, it's six times the area of one side. Because the cube has six sides and they're all the same. And if you're finding the surface area of a cylinder, this is a little more complicated. So it's 2 pi r times height plus 2 pi r squared. So you have the surface on the outside and the surface of each end. 
and they work an example for you. And that's all I have to say about this.